Trusses are the most efficient structural form used to resist high loads with very long spans. Do you know we have zero force members in trusses? In today's tutorial, I'm going to cover I struct E structural behavior course example in which there will be a truss where we have zero force members. This is the example which I will be solving today. Members in this pin jointed truss will experience tension, compression, or zero force. Choose the solution that matches with the loading given. Here are options option A, we have option B, and then option C and option D. Now, what option is correct? If you want to try it, pause this video and have a go yourself to see which option is correct. If you want to try the quiz first, go to this URL or simply scan this barcode to have a go at the question first and pause the video and later see the explanation. Now before I go through this example, I want to cover some golden rules. I want to cover the basics. So the first golden rule is that if two non-collinear members meet at unloaded joint, remember unloaded means that there shouldn't be any reaction or any force, then both are zero force members. These are two members and the angle theta has to be less than 180 degree for them to be zero because it's very difficult for these forces to balance each other. If one is tension, other is uh, compression, it will be difficult to balance the component. So these forces, if the angle is less than 180 degree at unloaded joint, they will be equal to zero. Now, if you have a look at this truss, you will see that at joint D, we have these two unloaded members. At joint G, we have two unloaded members. This means that member HG will be equal to zero, member GF will be equal to zero, and member DE will be zero, and DC will be zero as well. Now, these are unloaded members. So when two members meet at an angle and there's no other external force applied, then forces in those members are going to be zero. This is one rule. The next rule and the most important one is this one. When you have three forces, when there are two members collinear in the same uh, direction, and if a third member is entering into the joint, it will be very difficult to balance that uh, force because it will have a vertical component. These linear members have only horizontal uh, component. So this member has to be is zero. Otherwise, uh, there will be acceleration of the joint and the pin joint is going to uh, translate, which is which will cause instability in the structure. So that member has to be zero. If two collinear members at a joint, they are attached with the third member at an angle, the forces in that third member have to be zero. So have a look at this truss and tell me what, where do you see zero force member. So first, I can see at this joint, there's a zero force member. We have collinear members here and one member is being attached. So can I say that the force is going to be zero? When the force is zero, it means that I can remove that member. Now this member is removed. Once this member is removed, then it starts this chain effect on the other members. Now here you can see we have collinear members and a third member is entering here. So that will cause this third member to be a zero force member and that will remove the member. Next is this member. Now these two members are collinear and the force in this vertical member is going to be zero. So we remove this. The third one is again here at this joint. This is going to be zero. 
now you can see we have all these member forces zero because this is a symmetric truss so left side is going to be the same the next member is this one so let's move to the next one this is zero again zero zero and zero now this leaves us with only few members now you would say that why do we need these members when we have zero force uh, in them then what is the need why don't we have simply uh, these three four uh, members and we apply a uh, loading and the answer to this is that when we have very long members uh, trusses will have tension and compression in case of tension there will not be any buckling or instability in the structure instability happens when the sections are thin and slender to avoid that instability to avoid that uh, buckling in very long members and it happens in long members we use these uh, small members although these are zero force members but they provide overall stability to the structure now third and most important rule is collinear members will have same uh, forces so for example here if we have compression on left side on right side we will have compression if we have tension on this side the right side uh, will have tension as well so when we have collinear uh, members they will always have the same forces remember that when we have the joint like this the arrows pointing away from the joint it indicates tension and arrows pointing towards the joint it indicates uh, compression and when we have zero force members certainly we don't have these arrows now let us assess each option in our trust to see that which option is correct and i will tell you really very important tips to attempt these questions really very quickly but i will give you lots of explanation as well this is our question looking at this question we have second rule can you see we have two collinear members and one member being attached to that so a third member entering into a collinear two members can you see that pattern the answer is pretty obvious yes so if you have a look at this this vertical member will have a zero force because we have two collinear members over here it is attached to this so firstly i will rub off this member so i don't have this member over here this is zero force member now this will lead me to collinear members remember that collinear members will have same forces if it is zero we will have zero force if it is compression we will have compression if it is tension on one side we will have tension on other side remember that force here in this member was zero that's why we removed that member now let us assess these options in the light of uh, this criteria now let's have a look at option a in option a observe that we have tension over here tension is not possible this force has to be zero because it is entering into the joint this means that option a is incorrect we use process of elimination to eliminate this option let's go to option b now in option b again you can see we have a zero force here which is fine but these two forces should be equal because we have collinear members and collinear members we can either have tension or compression or we can have zero force members on each side but here we have two different forces which means that this option is incorrect as well let us assess option c it at least passes this check so we have zero force member here and we have tension on the left and tension on the right side so it passes this check let us see option d passes this check or not at option d we have zero force here in vertical member but in 
this collinear member we have two different forces which is not possible when forces are collinear it means that they will have same forces and that leads to this option being incorrect so option a b and d these are incorrect just by looking at these things option c is the correct one now let me explain this option so first we have zero force member here by using this golden rule we don't have any member here when two members are attached at an angle which is less than 180 degree and the joint itself is unloaded then forces in those members will be zero so that's the reason force in these two members will be zero and i will remove these two forces as well now once i have these removed these forces then i will have two reactions so one is vertical and one is horizontal so i don't know what is the direction of horizontal reaction but at least here it will be vertically upward reaction because we have load applied that is downwards so this is a pin support to counteract that upward force i should have a downward force here so downward force means that if i uh, resolve this force uh, it will be rightwards and uh, downwards so when we have arrows that are pointing towards the joint it is termed as uh, compression so now we have a rightward force over here to counteract that rightward force we should have a leftward force here so when you have a leftward force here that is arrow pointing away from the joint when arrow is pointing away from the joint we call it as tension so we have compression we have tension here when we have two collinear members then the forces will be equal so we will have tension over here as well and if the member is moving towards left at this point the reaction the horizontal reaction has to move towards uh, right and now i have determined the forces in these uh, members and then here at roller support i will have a vertical uh, reaction to counteract that vertical reaction i should have a downward uh, force downward means that it will be leftward and downward this means that arrows pointing towards the joint it means it is a compression now if it is a leftward force over here at this point in this member it should be rightward force this means arrow is pointing away from the joint away from the joint means it is tension now i have tension and compression in these uh, members the next will be this one when load is applied downwards i should have upward force over here and upward means that it is pointing towards the joint towards the joint means it is compression when this is pointing towards the joint the force in this inclined member it should be pointing away from the joint so when it is pointing away from the joint it is tension over here now if this is pointing away from the joint then force in this member should be pointing towards the joint when it is pointing towards the joint it is called compression now once we have compression over here then because of symmetry we have no other horizontal force so force in this member is going to be in compression as well so arrows are pointing towards the joint so here arrows are pointing towards the joint as well now here at if you focus on uh, this joint here arrows both arrows are pointing towards the joint it means that force in this member it has to be a tension the arrows should be pointing away from the joint so that's why we have force in this member as uh, tension because of symmetry i can say that force in this member will be tension force in this member is going to be compression and again force in this member over here is going to be a tension force because of uh, symmetry now you can see that using these simple logics and golden rules we are able to determine the member forces 
So the correct answer is answer C and you saw that how did I determine the, the member forces. You can watch full video series on structural behavior by uh, clicking this URL or simply uh, scanning this barcode and you can download the copy of lecture slides by clicking on this URL or scan this barcode and links will be provided in description down below for both video series and lectures as well. Thanks for watching this lecture today. I will see you in my next lecture.